No sooner had the master of Shinanju broken the dire news to the Bunji Lama and the others than the air was full of flying machines. They zipped back and forth in the thin air, rotors buzzing. There was no escape from them except downward. We cannot remain here. We will fight. Kula lifted both AK-47s in his big hands and peppered any helicopter that dared stray too close. One, mortally wounded, spiraled down to blossom into a fiery flower far below. Another fired back, shattering the cockpit of their own helicopter. Kula directed his fire toward that ship. The twin streams of lead chewed off the tail rotor. It too fell from the sky. The master of Shinanju allowed Kula his sport. When both clips ran empty, the big Mongol dropped his rifles in disgust and drew his silver dagger as if to reach out and snare a passing helicopter for gutting. In the end, they started down off the mountains, plowing through waist-high snow that concealed treacherous boulders. Cadres in PLA Green began rappelling down from their helicopters to places of ambush below the snow line. They crouched in waiting, weapons ready, hard eyes cruel. Cadres below, helicopters above and across the pasture land that separated Lhasa proper from the mountain on which they stood, came column after column of tanks and jeeps and trucks. Holding his black skirts before him like a plow, Chun blazed a trail through the snow sufficient for the Bunji Lama, Kula, and Lab Song Dram to follow safely. He grew grim of visage. It was possible to steal past the lurking cadres Possible also for one of his consummate skill to reach the relative safety of Lhasa and be spirited out of Tibet by guile and cunning. But to lead his charges to safety was another matter. Some would die, perhaps all. All except for the master of Shinanju himself, of course. He would refuse to die. Surrender was the only reasonable option. Surrender, and then perhaps the advantage could be regained and the tables turned. He turned to break the harsh truth to those who had put their trust in him. Squirrely Chicane couldn't believe her ears. Surrender, she shouted, except no words came out. I will never surrender to the Han. Attaboy, Kula, Squirrely thought. I will surrender if it is ordained that I surrender. You're a big help, Squirrely thought. We must surrender if we are to leave this mountain alive. Never, Squirrely screamed mentally. This was awful. The whole storyline is falling apart. I've got to get them back on track. They need inspiration. If only I could say something or sing a song. That's it, a song. I need an uplifting song. Their spirits will soar and all this defeatist talk will end up on the cutting room floor where it belongs. Squirrely bustled up to the master of Shinanju and tried to get his attention. She pointed to her mouth, made faces, did everything she could think of except kick him in the shin. The Bunji wishes to speak. She should be heard. So, reluctantly, Chun reached up to release her vocal cords. You may speak. Oh, it's about time you did that. I have a plan. The Bunji has a plan. Tell us this plan. Just watch. And without another word, Squirrely clambered up on a snowy crag within full view of the cadres below the helicopters above, and the tanks and military vehicles assembling at the base of the mountain, and burst into song. I am the Buddha. The Buddha is me. I got my start beneath the Bodhi tree. I am the Bunji. The Bunji is me. Here I to set Tibet free. exploded in a hundred mines at once. The master of Shinanju leapt from his spot and yanked Squirrely Chicane off the crag. She came unwillingly, but she came. Seek shelter! 
Tons of snow and rocks roared down in a fury of sliding ice and tumbling rock. There was no time to do anything except crouch under substantial stone and pray to whatever gods could hear above the deafening roar of the mountaintop that raced down, gathering speed and substance and destruction. 